Good evening, good evening, good evening. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you today. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you. All right. Hallelujah. God bless you this afternoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 welcome. God bless you. Come on in. Thank God for you being with us. Hallelujah. Thank God for you being with us. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you today. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening. God bless you all. Hallelujah. God bless you all. God bless you all. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you today. Listen, we love you. We thank God for you being with us. 
God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We love you dearly. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God for you joining us this evening. We're, we're back again. Uh, this is uh, Sunday evening, October the 11th. Uh, we are still in our fresh oil revival. Hallelujah. We thank Apostle Joseph Dean. Uh, we thank all the bishops and apostles of, 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 of KAF and LIF uh, for, for continuing the ministry as God has so instructed us to continue in this word for a bit. And so we're, we're super excited about what God is doing. And, uh, and we thank God for you being with us. And we bless God for you uh, sharing with us tonight as we continue our study in the word of God, as we continue to study the word of God. We're super, super um, excited that you take this Sunday evening to just share with us, you know. Um, we don't take it lightly. Just a couple of quick announcements before we get into the word. want to remind you, um, uh, first of all, I pray all of you had a great worship experience in your worship experience today. I pray all of you had a great time in Christ. I pray that you were blessed. Um, man, what a great time we had um, um, at First Baptist Greater Washington Park, and we had a great time with the Impact Experience this morning. And man, when I tell you, um, it's amazing it's amazing to see how God is manifesting in the kingdom. Um, 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 it's, it's, just, it's just so amazing to see how, how God is doing this thing right now in this season. So, so we're super excited to have you with us and so, 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 so happy to have you online with us tonight. Um, and again, I bless God for you, all of our Impact family, all of our Kingdom Agenda Fellowship friends, Lyft, KAF, all of you who are here are just kingdom people in general, you know. We don't, we don't take it lightly um, that you take time to do this. Um, uh, we don't take it lightly that you take time to do this and you spend time with us. Just a, way, a couple of announcements very, very quickly. Um, don't forget that tomorrow um, um, is, is a holiday for many of us. Um, so tomorrow we will not have Inspire AM. We will be... Um, Back on again at 6 p.m., Bishop Lenard will have our fresh oil assignment for tomorrow night. He's assigned tomorrow night, so he'll be completing the fresh oil assignment for tomorrow night. So join us right here, right here um, uh, on Facebook Live, and, and we'll be live with the Great Commission Christian Center and, and Bishop Lenard Rogers. Um, so we're super excited about what God is going to do. Um, what God is going to do, and so we, we're gonna we're gonna be here um, on tomorrow night at 6 p.m. with Bishop Rogers and our Great Commission family. Um, after which we're going to um, after which we're going to um, have our, our our discussion on the pandemic, the kingdom, and the pandemic. We'll have that discussion with our medical professionals um, on uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Um, uh, I'm going to be working on my birthday. Yes, I am. Uh, yeah, tomorrow is my birthday. Tomorrow I'll be 54 years old. I'm looking for them double nickels in another year, but I'll be 54 years old on tomorrow. And I thank God for, for blessing us to see uh, 54 years uh, on this earth. Um, so I don't take it lightly that the Lord would do that. Um, so, so watch this. Watch this. Watch this. We, we, we're into, we, we want to get into uh, some discussion tonight. Um, you, as you know, uh, earlier this morning in our impact experience and in our closing, and in our initial close, you know, preachers have several, several closes. In our initial close, yeah, in our, in our, in our initial close um, on on us uh, Sunday, on, on a Saturday, on, on Friday night, um, I told you about two more um, on Saturday night. Yeah, I told you about the last part of this this Sukkot festival um, and a particular time of um, Shemini Azaret, Shemini Azaret, and Simchat Torah, Simchat Torah. Now, both of these times are times when the Jew honors the Torah. They honor the Word of God for them in their life. Now we know that the Jews only honor um, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, um, and Deuteronomy. 
Those are the five books that comprise the heart of everything they do. Those five books is what the Gentile calls the Pentateuch. Uh, Penta meaning five, the first five books of the Bible, okay? And so I'm going to drop back into Torah for a minute as we, as we look at the word tonight, because I still want to continue in this thought of the manifested word and how the word works for us, how the word works for us. And I want to, I want to uh, pick up here tonight. I want to drop back into the Pentateuch just for a minute. And I want to go back to the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings. Hallelujah. And I want to go to the first mention of, 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 of the word, word. Um, when we talk about the word, what was spoken from the mouth of God. When we talk about the word, um, when we talk about the word, uh, we're, we're talking about now a powerful powerful, powerful entity in the earth, okay? We're talking about a powerful entity in the earth. And when we talk about this in that context, I wanna look at Genesis, the 15th chapter, Genesis 15, hallelujah. I'm gonna look at Genesis 15 and verse one, because this is a context within itself, okay? It's a context within itself. And, and, and watch this. I want to kind of locate this in scripture and in time and season, because what, what's going to happen here in Genesis 15, um, 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 the, 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 the word has to go to work for Abraham and bring about a manifested destiny. Watch this. I want to tell you tonight that one of the things you've got to understand in your spiritual walk is that the word is a manifester of the will of God. Mm. The word is a manifesto of the will of God. Uh, when, when, and, and this is going to be the word concerning Abraham. The word concerning Abraham. Now, why is this word concerning Abraham so important? Because Abraham, watch this, um, is, 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 is considered for us the father of our faith. He's the father of faith. Watch this. And you know, you've got to understand this. You cannot have faith without the word of God. Hallelujah. Mm, yeah. You cannot have faith without the word of God. And you got to understand this: the word of God is your faith builder. Hallelujah. And so on this, on this 5781 celebration of Simchat Torah and Shemini Atzeret, a celebration of Torah, I want you to commit to renewing your relationship with the word. I want you to commit to renewing your relationship with the word. We've got to get ourselves back in a place, watch this, where the word of God is paramount in everything, where the word of God is major. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you like this, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna work through Abraham just for a minute to show you that the word was working for you, even word was working, what, let me say, for you, on you, and through you, the word was working for you, on you, and through you when you didn't even realize it. You didn't even realize it. And I want to tell you that God has not sent you out. He has not sent you out to accomplish anything in the earth without a word. Hallelujah. Bless you, my daughter, Adrian. I want to say to you that God has not sent you out to accomplish anything in the earthly realm minus a word. <laughs> There is a spoken word over every action that is happening in time. Let me show you in the life of Abraham, the father of faith. Now, you know that Abraham, watch this, is the central figure in many different faiths in the world. Watch this. Judaism recognizes Abraham as a patriarch. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Judaism recognizes Abraham as a patriarch. Christianity, because of our Judeo-Christian roots and the first pioneers of Christianity were converts from Judaism, they recognize, we recognize Abraham as the father of faith. Hallelujah. But Abraham is also honored by Islam. Abraham is honored by Bahaism. 
Abraham Bahaism. Abraham is honored as the root of many monotheistic faiths in this in this in the current world. And so Abraham is a central point of faith for us. Watch this. And so I want to take you to Abraham and I want to give you a word that the Lord gave Abraham because I want to build your faith in tonight's session. Hallelujah. I want to build your faith in tonight's session of this fresh oil revival. Hallelujah. I want you to renew your relationship with this word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. Genesis 15, verse 1. Let's go to Genesis 15, verse 1. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to, ah, uh, Jesus. I'm going to um, mention a principle here called the law of first mention. The law of first mention is a, is a, is an interpretive law that, that theologians use to understand and study the word of God. Here's the principle. You go back to when something was mentioned the very first time, and you can see a trend throughout scripture of how God would intend to use it throughout the entirety of scripture. Okay? So, so when we talk about how something is mentioned the first time, we go back and we look at the functionality and the situation of what God's doing, watch this, and how he's going to use that word or use that principle the first time. It's called the law of first mention. <coughs> and that clues us in, that clues us in to how it possibly will be used throughout scripture. So in Genesis 15 and one, I want to, um, deal with this word, watch this, word, W-O-R-D, the word. Genesis 15 and 1 says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. When we consider the law of first mention, this is the first time that the Lord says his word's going to do anything. Now watch this. Everything that's been made at this point has been created by his word. Everything he's done, he's done it by his word. Word and spirit, word and spirit. He spoke and the spirit moved. Everything he created, he created through his spoken word. Watch this. If you go all the way back, all the way back to Genesis 1. You, you, you go all the way back to Genesis 1. You will see how the word functioned in the creative process. Watch this. In the beginning, God created. We're in Genesis 1 now. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of of the waters. So we see spirit present. Now watch this. And in and, and, and verse, verse three, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Verse, verse three. And the Bible says, and God said, ah, Jesus, and God said, and, listen, and God said, God began to speak, to utter, to um, um, mar, to, 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 to pronounce a thing and then creation begins to form. Everything begins to form at the word of God. Now watch this. You, 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 if you go to Genesis 1 and you begin to walk this thing, you will see that every dimension of creation came by way of a word. Ah, in Genesis 1, verse 3, we see that the heavenly lights came by what God said. Hallelujah, by what God says. In Genesis 1 and 6, we will see that the earth, the firmament on the second day, was it came by way of what God said. Watch this, 1 and 11, you'll see, watch this, that the herbs, the trees, and all the yielding fruit of the earth, it came by what God said. God moves by his word. He spoke it into existence. You can continue on down Genesis, Genesis 1.14. Listen, the heavens and the earth, the, the, the lights, the, 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 the sun, the moon, the stars, they were a result of what 
God said. So watch this. What God says is significant. Mm. It is what God says that is significant. Now watch this. Watch this. Keep in mind Genesis 15. Don't lose Genesis 15 in your understanding. Watch this. Now watch this. After, after God then does all the creation by what he creates and what he says, watch this. Then, then, then watch this. God, the Bible says, mm. the Bible says, watch this, that he then makes man, he puts him in the garden. Watch this in Genesis 2. He puts it in the garden. Watch this. <clears throat> watch this. Now watch this. Watch this. Now watch this. I want, I, want, I want to challenge you on something. Watch this. Watch this. When you get down to Genesis and the context, the context of, of Genesis 2, I want to flip down to this context of 18 through 20. 18 through 20. Genesis 2. Remember, in Genesis 1, God is saying. Now watch this in Genesis 2, 18 through 20. The Bible says, and the Lord God said, once again, same thing, same principle. God opened his mouth. He spoke. He says, watch this. Something's got to change. So if I want something to change, I'm going to speak to, watch this, what I need to change. Watch this. He says that the Lord said, he award, he award. Watch this. It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. Watch this. Watch this. He, he brought them to Adam to see what Adam would call them. Now, this word call here, watch this. Watch this. Mm. This word call, and I, I'm going to be very spe specific in this. So let me walk this for you. When God says he speaks or he utters, he are Mars. He are Mars. Watch this. But he says, I'm going to bring every animal of the earth to Adam, not to see if Adam's going to um, war. I want to see if he's going to kara. Uh, Jesus. I want to see if he's going to kara. Watch this. What's the difference in kara and um, war? I'm glad you asked me. Kara uh, means, watch this, that you call out, you recite, you cry aloud or you proclaim. It means you announce a thing. You make a sound. Watch this. Watch this. You make a sound, but watch this. You're not the originator of the sound. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Watch this. Watch this. Watch. Look at the verse again. God had already formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and he brought them to Adam to see what Adam would recite over them, what he would declare over them, what he would pronounce over them, what he would proclaim that they are. So watch this. What we got to understand, a lot of times when we go to declaring stuff and decreeing stuff, is we don't change the nature of God's divine and sovereign will. We can only declare what the Father has already spoken. You got to see this. You don't get to call into existence what you want to call into existence. We only get to call into existence what God has purposed by his sovereign and divine will. You don't get to call it healed if God says it's dead. Okay, that's going to upset some of y'all. That's going to upset some of y'all. See, see, and see, for our own, for our own, <clears throat> for our own soul's sake, we make it fit our squares. We, we reduce God to us. But God is saying, I don't want Adam to reduce me to him. I want him to look at me and use the God portion of himself to call what I have already spoken. You got it, Burke. He watches over his word. You don't get to call anything into existence. You know, we, we do a lot of stuff that's naming and claiming, declaring and decreeing. I'm not opposed to it, but I think it needs to be done scripturally. See, you don't get to make up your own decree. You only get to declare his decrees. In other words, what the word has said, we can pronounce and announce. But you don't get to pronounce and announce what the word hasn't said. Listen, even in your prophetic manifestation, listen, I, I've listened to some people prophesy some stuff and say some stuff that, 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 that don't even fit the word at all. And, 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 it, and it comes to naught. 
<laughs> Go back to the verse. Let me show you again. God said, God, God, I'm warned. He spoke it. He uttered it. Watch this. And, and, and one form of this word means to actually say what's in one's heart. Mm. So watch this. When we, and this is so important in this year of 5781 as leaders, when we speak, are we speaking God's heart? God says what's in his heart, but then he puts it in our hands to say, will we cry aloud? Will we utter the sound of what's in God's heart? Will we recite? Will we call it out? Will we proclaim what's in God's heart? He says, Adam, come here. Let me see how much God you got, son. Now, remember this. This is before the fall. So now God and Adam are in perfect union. Watch this. Adam ain't even been distracted by Eve yet because Eve doesn't exist. Ah! Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, I, br I brought everything in the earth. So that means, every that means Adam. Because of the God spirit in him, because of the because of the suke in him, the spirit of God in him was able to recite, call forth, replicate everything that God has said. So when God made this animal, watch this, with a long snout on him, low to the earth, about two feet, with a long tail, and he made that animal and he formed it from his heart. Adam had enough God in him to say, that's an anteater. When God made these little creatures with six or I guess six legs, ants have six legs and a jointed body, and they and they and they they built mounds and all that stuff. Adam was able to look at that ant and say, "That's an ant." Why? Because he had the heart of God within him, so he recited what God had spoken. You gotta see this. So we gotta watch this, men and women of God. We gotta get ourselves. So, so, so closely walking with the heart of God to when we speak, they hear God speaking. They hear the voice of God. They hear the heart of God toward them. They hear God's will and desire toward them. Why? Because our hearts have so been walking so closely with him that the revelation of what God said can be recited. Now watch this. So watch this. Watch this. There's another, there's another dimension of this I want to draw out for you. He came to see what Adam would recite, what Adam would proclaim, what Adam would declare of his creation. Now watch this. And the scripture says, and whatsoever Adam called, ah, Jesus, whatsoever Adam called, Every living creature, that was the name thereof. Watch this. Adam called what God had said. Heart of God, ant eater. Adam's voice, ant eater. Heart of God, leopard. Adam's voice, leopard. Heart of God, lion. Adam's voice, lion. Heart of God, elephant. Adam's, Adam's, Adam's voice, elephant. Heart of God, I, Jesus, serpent. Heart of God. I mean, Adam's word, serpent. <laughs> Adam called what was birthed inside of him in a pure and unbroken communion, one on one. He says, I'm going to call it this. And God says, I'm going to agree with you, Adam, because you agree with me. I wonder how many times God disagrees with us because we've yet to agree with him. Oh, I got a question. I got a question. I wonder how many words we've spoken that God didn't agree with because we didn't agree with him. We didn't talk to him first. He says in Jeremiah 15, and I will give you pastors after mine own heart and they will feed you. Well, what's on the plate, pastors? What's on the plate, bishops? What's on the plate? Is it your desire or what? is in the heart of the father for the kingdom. He says, he says, he says, every living creature that Adam called, that was the name thereof. Now watch this. Adam didn't just call. Watch this. The Bible says all here, and Adam gave names to the cattle and to the fowl of the air 
and every beast of the field, and there was not found and help meet for him. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. This word here, mm, mm, mm. watch this, watch this, oh God. This word right here, this word kara, watch this. It's the same, I mean, it's the same word as, 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 as what Adam gave, Adam karad. He called and he karad. He called and gave. Both of them are fit, fit the root word karad. But watch this, watch this. <clears throat> Here's the different dimension. And this is where we have to stand as priest and prophet in this season. See, watch this, and I'm going to say it again. We take as priest, watch this, we as priest, we take the concerns of the people to the Father. But as prophet, we take the word of the Father to the people. We got to stand in both of those dimensions in this season because our voice is important in this season. So as priest, we represent the people to God. As prophet, we represent God to the people. So what does Adam do with the creation of that time? First of all, he gets with God, thank you, Jesus, and brings the manifested heart of God to creation. And watch this, and then he takes, watch this, and gives those names to the creatures. He says, I, I, I know what God calls you. This is what it's going to call you, not cattle. I'm going to call you a gazelle. Because watch this, cattle is not just, it's not just an overarching theme. It is a kind in scripture. Let me dive into this just for a second. Listen, when the Bible says, when the Bible says, watch this, that, that, he, that he, he declares that everything would, would, would recreate after its own kind, those are categories in the kingdom. Those are, those are if, if, I, if we were to say feline, feline, if I were to say feline, what would that mean to you? That means cat. Watch this. But there's many different types of cats. There's leopards. There's tigers. There's gazette. I mean, there's, there's leopards. There's tigers. Uh, what other kind of cats? So there's, there's, there's jaguars. Um, there's uh, mountain lions, there's um, there's bobcats, all those are felines, so they are of a particular kind. If I was to say canine, I'm talking dogs now. Oh God, Terrence Burke got a big old dog from what I understand. Listen, they're Rottweilers, they're German Shepherds, they're, they're, they're are poodles. <laughs> There are miniature schnauzers. There are Doberman pincers. There, there, there are Alaskan sheepdog. There, there's all kinds of canines. That's a kind. That's why, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. If you don't watch it, your pit bull will mate with your, um, your pit bull will mate with your dash hound. Or your pit bull will mate with your bull mastiff because they're of the same kind. But your pit bull cannot mate with your cat, they're not the same kind. <laughs> so I want you to see the depth of what Adam do. When he does the cattle, that's everything that's a four-footed beast in the earth. When he says the fowl of the air, that includes the hawk, the hummingbird, that includes the red bird, the blue bird, the blue jay. That Adam had a job to name all of this from the heart of God. And he turns around and gives creation everything that it knows because he has the heart of God. We're talking about this word. Now watch this. Why is this so important? Because Adam, because the Lord says this, says this, says this to them. He says, watch this. I'm going back to Genesis 15 now. Man, I, I, man, sorry, I went on the rabbit trail, but it, it got good to me. So, so Genesis 15, watch this. He says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, watch this, here's the word at work. Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and the exceeding reward. Can I build your faith tonight? The Bible says, watch this, this was the first functionality of a word from the Lord coming to his humanity. Listen, he had spoken everything into existence. He had given Adam direct communication with his word. Watch this, and let me, let me, and let me say this to you too. Let me, let me just give you this as a sideboard, as a nugget, and I'm gonna get out of this. Let me give you this as a sideboard, a nugget. Now I listen to people, I listen to people all the time talk about how can a loving God have these kind of terrible things happening in the earth? Let me remind you of something very, very quickly. In Genesis one and two, 
God creates man in his own image and his own likeness. In Genesis 2, he forms him from the dust of the earth. He breathes into his nostrils and he becomes a living soul. He then takes and makes, uh, uh, takes and puts him to sleep, takes from him and makes woman out of a rib, out of the side of man. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So he separates them physically, but he never separates their soul and their spirit. Okay, message for a different day. He separates them physically, but he never sets their so never separates their soul and their spirit. Okay, I'm gonna deal with some myths in a, in a little while. Watch this. Some myths on our sexuality and everything else. Is listen. So watch this. After Satan tricks and tempts Adam and Eve, and they fall in sin. Watch this. Then watch this. Then watch what happens. By Genesis five, the Bible says that Adam begins to beget sons after his own image and his own likeness. Watch this. So that's a fallen image and a fallen likeness. This is the, pro this is the progression of manhood. Now watch this, of mankind. So watch this. So once man falls, once sin enters in, watch this. And, and people say, why, why, does God, why does God have um, do certain things? You remember he put them out of the garden. Hallelujah. And he sent the angels to protect them from the tree of life. Remember, there were two major trees in the garden. There was the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. He said, of every other tree you can eat, but don't bother these. Watch this. So once Adam and Eve sinned, watch this. Mm, 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 mm. Once they sinned and they ate from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, watch this, watch this. And people don't consider this. But their heart and their nature changed. Their heart and their nature changed. They now have a sin nature versus the spirit of God resting in them. So watch this. So now watch this what happens. This is why the proverb says, guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. Come on now. I know, I know I'm saying some odd stuff, but stay with me. If your heart changes, guess what's going to change next? Your words. When your heart changes, your word changes. What you speak changes. Oh, God. Come on, somebody. So watch this. I can watch what you're saying and see your heart. Don't tell me you didn't mean that. Don't tell me. Don't tell me it was, it was a Freudian slip, a slip of the tongue. No, that was what was in your heart. Don't, don't tell me that that disrespectful tone that you speak to me in. No, that's what's in your heart. So watch this, if their nature changed and they now have a sin nature, guess what else changed? Their tongue changed. And, and watch this, because of fallen creation, everything that was good has now become perverted. So now, so now, now, when people say, when people say, when people say, you know, um, 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 that I'm created in the image of God. No, you're not. No, 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 no. You can say, my father, Adam, was created in the image of God. God created me. But you're in the image of Adam, your jacked up father. We're all born in sin now and shaped in iniquity. Read Psalm 51. So watch this. Watch now. Because our nature is falling, our tongues are falling. Oh, God. Our mouth is falling. Our thoughts are falling. That's why the Old Testament writer said you can't even trust your heart because out of it flows wicked devices, wicked devices out of your heart. I'm still talking about the word, but wicked devices, you know, listen, listen, listen. Lest you be redeemed, do you know how foul you can really be? Come on now. Have you ever looked at yourself to see how nasty and vile and mean you can really be? I mean, if you acted on every one of them thoughts that you thought, thank God for the word. Thank God for the word that keeps us. Thank God for the word that keeps us. Thank God that we, oh, Jesus, thank God for the word. Thank God that we've been renewed in the image of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Lord and Savior Jesus. Thank God that we've been reconciled to God by the word of God. Thank God that he's reconciled you and I by his word. Thank God for a new Nature that's not in the image of our first father, Adam, the one whereby, read Romans 5, make a note of that Romans 5 for me, whereby sin entered in, but by the second Adam, whereby salvation has come. Have you ever thought about just how foul you could really be? Come on, saints. 
Come on, Ray, just listen. Thank you, Father, for keeping us. God, we don't always get it right, but Father, thank you for keeping us. Lord God, don't let our slip become a slide. Ah, Jesus, don't let our slips become a slide. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So when we look at the word, hey, my Dean, Mother Dean, God bless you, Mama. Hallelujah. Watch this. I'm back at Genesis 15 and 1. Now watch this. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. Watch this. Watch this. When we talk about this word, what are we talking about now? We're not with the amwar. We're not with the calling. We're, we're not with the saying and the calling now. We're with the dabwar. Now watch this. The dabwar is of a different nature. It's the same thing, really. It's really close to the, to the amwar, the dabwar and the amwar, because it means the speech or the word or what's been spoken. It means words. It means big business or occupation, the acts or the matters at hand. It means, watch this, that, 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 that watch this, that I've spoken a word. Now watch this, and you got to see this. Jesus, thank you for the revelation, Father. Thank you for the revelation, Father. The dabwar, watch this, one of, the, one of the iterations of this word means the acts or the matter, the case of something or the manner, how it's going to happen, what's going to take place, what's going to be, in other words, watch this, in other words, God has spoken a divine history for Abraham. He said, Abraham, this is what I want you to do. This is what's going to happen by you. And guess what? I'm going to send my word to make sure it takes place. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me, let me, let me, let me get you to this for a second. Let me get you to this for a second. In Genesis, in Genesis, hallelujah. In Genesis, I, I want to say it's uh, chapter 12. Yeah, Genesis 12. I want you to look at this word spoken over Abraham. Genesis 12, watch this. Genesis 12, let's go here. Because God says, I got to perform my word. Oh, God, I got to perform my word. But watch this, I'm not going to send you forth to do anything without a word. Here is the word for Abraham in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. I'm almost done, y'all. I want to build your faith because I want to say you, the Lord has spoken some things about you that you're going to be the head and not the tail, the above on and not the beneath. He says he'll keep you in perfect peace if you set your mind on him. I don't know where you are today, what your situation or your circumstance more be, may be, what health issue you're dealing with, what marital issue you're dealing with, what church issue you're dealing with, what kingdom issue you're dealing with. No matter what, what you're dealing with, get a word on it because God has spoken a word concerning you in this season. He says in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, look at this word. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, <laughs> watch this, watch this. He is, he is, I'm warned Abraham once again. He says, I'm going to speak a word to you. Watch this, watch this, but I'm going to send a word ahead of you and behind you too. The Lord said to Abraham, uh, uh, get out of that country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make thee a great nation. This is the word for Abraham. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Listen, that was the word over Abraham's life. That was the word over Abraham's life. He says, watch this. He says, watch this. I'm sharing this word with you, Abraham, but at first I'm going to speak it unto you. Watch this. I'm going to speak it unto you, but I'm not going to leave it there, Abraham. I'm going to send the word with you. Hence, Genesis 15 and 1, he says, he came back to him in a vision saying, watch this, fear not. So watch this, what I want to say the word will do for you, what the word will do for you tonight. And I'm through, I'm through, but I got to build your faith for just a second. The word can remove all your fears. He says, fear not. That's the first thing he says in this word. He says, first of all, Abraham, I, Abraham, I want you to fear not. Can I tell you that if you get the word and you stand in the word, it will soothe your fears? 
When you listen, you need to get a word on how big your God is. Your God is bigger than your boss. Your God is bigger than a pastor. Your God is bigger than Donald Trump. Your God is bigger than Joe Biden. Your God is bigger than Kamala Harris. Your God is bigger than Mike Pence. He says, fear not. You don't have to fear what government's going to do. He says, I set up governments and I take them down. I put one up and I take down another. He says, I open doors that no man can shut and I shut the doors that no man can open. Get a word on how big your God is and your fear will cease. He says, fear not. Oh, God, watch this, watch this. He says, fear not. Fear not. The word can soothe all of your fears. Oh, God. Watch this. Not only can the word soothe your fears, he says, but the word can be your shield. He says, I am your shield. Now watch this. This seems like a transition, but watch this. This is an indication of relationship. Watch this. Now notice this. The bot, remember, remember, I showed you in the beginning in Genesis one that God spoke everything that was in the, that was in existence. So He spoke out of Himself to create all that we're experiencing right now. Though we're seeing it in its fallen state, we missed it in its perfect in its perfect creation. We're seeing it now in its fallen existence, and then in the future, we're going to enjoy it in its fullest redemption. Watch this. We, we missed it in its perfect state. We're experiencing it now in its fallen condition. And in the end, in eternity future, we're going to see it in its redemptive state. We're going to see the new Jerusalem. But watch this. Everything that is God spoke out of himself. So watch this. While this looks like it's a transition. Hallelujah. He says the word comes to Abraham to Abram, but he says, I'm with you. I'm thy shield. I'm thy exceeding great reward. He says, watch this. He says, I'm letting you know, watch this, that the revelation I've spoken into your spirit, it is me. Can I tell you this? L listen, let me confirm one of my favorite scriptures. You're going to hear it almost every broadcast in this system, in this season. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That's why Adam, watch this, could speak so clearly what creation was because he had God in his heart and the word that came out of his mouth matched what was in his heart before the fall. Ah, Jesus. He says, here's the word of the Lord for you, Abram. You ain't got to fear. He says, because I'm thy shield. So what is he saying? He said, I, the creator God, am your shield. But watch this. He's in essence saying, word is your shield. Oh, Jesus. Word is your shield, your buckler, your defense, your margone. It, the, the word is going to protect you. The word is not just your shield, but he says, it's your exceeding and great Reward, it's going to pay off if you stay with it. This word, this word reward means, watch this, your, watch this, it means your wages or your pay, but watch this, what it also means. Oh, God, it means your fare or your passage money. This word, sakar, it means your what you hire for. It's your hire, it's your wages. So watch this. As you employ the word, the word then begins to pay off in your life. You get the benefits of walking in the word that's from the heart of God. That's why in this year of anointed leadership preachers, you got to preach the word of God. Don't get into your emotions. Don't get into yourself. Stay in the word. It will reward the people. And as the people use that word, it will be wages unto them. As you employ it and let it work, it will pay off in your life. But watch this. There's a whole nother aspect you got to get. Woo! It's your fare. It's your fee. It's your passage money. In other words, uh, Jesus, the Sarkar, watch this, paves your way. Watch this. Ah, oh, Jesus. When you get ready to get on that airplane, you got to buy a ticket. When you get ready to get on a city line bus, you got to have a bus pass that you paid money for. Uh, back in the old days, we used to have to drop money in the little in a little coin collector, and it would, and according to the money, 
that you drop in, it will say how long you got to ride. Watch this. What, 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 what this song car means, watch this, is that the word is your passageway. It's your reward. It's going to get you, watch this, to the destiny that I already promised you. Remember Genesis 12? He said, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. You're going to be blessed. And you're going to be a blessing. But you got to get my word. And the word that I speak to you, the dabwar, the word that I speak to you, it's going to watch this. It's going to pay off when you use it, and it's going to open doors when you need doors open. Because I got a word for you, Abram. Ah, oh, Jesus. The word will work for you, people of God. In this season, we got to walk in the word. Now, that, now, of course, there's write down Psalm 119. You want to see the benefits of the word. Go, go, go study Psalm 119. Listen, they're, they're, I think that's the most exhaustive passage about the word. If you want to see the benefits, I'm going to give you that as homework. I want you to take Psalm 119, and I want you to just walk. Now, I'm going to tell you this. It's the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119. Out of all the chapters in the Bible, it is the longest chapter in the Bible. Ah, Jesus. It is, it is the longest book of the Bible. It's the longest book of the Bible. All right? And so I, I, I'm not sure exactly of how many verses it has, but I'm, I'm about to get to the bottom of it just so I can tell you. But it's got, it's, and it's all about the work of the word in your life. It's got 176 verses in it. 176 verses in it. And, and, and watch this. It deals with your, your interaction with the word. Your interaction with the word. Let's get back to the word, good people. You want to see your divine destiny? Get back into the word. You want to see how to live right now? Get back into the word. You want to understand God's original intent? Get back into the word. Listen, I've done, I've done what I believe I'm supposed to do tonight. Let's renew our relationship with the word. In this Simcat Torah, this Sim, this Ashaga Miseret, Shemini Miseret, and we'll, we'll we'll move on tomorrow. Um, but but I want to tell you once again, uh, Bishop Lenard will be on. Our son will be on tomorrow at 6 p.m. right here for another fresh oil release. And then at 7 p.m. we'll have our discussion, our kingdom discussion. Go out to our Facebook pages, Unlift and KAF. Uh, all of you will have a Zoom link that you can dial into the Zoom call, and we're going to be talking further about of the kingdom in pandemic. Listen, I love you all. I bless God for you. If you'd like to sow tonight, um, the cash app is in the, is in the description uh, on the post tonight. Um, but let's, let's get back into the word. Psalm 119. I'm going to, I'm going to make a point to make sure that I read it and, and meditate on it again tonight myself. Um, let's, let's, let's get back into the word and watch this. Let's get our hearts so aligned with God that our mouths are not speaking our hearts but they're speaking the heart of God. They're speaking the heart of God. Not our hearts, but the heart of God. Listen, I love you all. God bless you tonight. We thank God for you. We don't take it lightly that you've shared this time with us. And, uh, and we bless God. Bless God for you. Amen. Amen. And amen. Have a wonderful night tonight. Um, and, uh, and we thank God for you being with us, okay? So um, again, we love you all. Um, again, we, we, we thank you, um, uh, Apostle Joseph Dean, for this fresh oil um, encounter and this time of us being together. I wanna thank all the bishops and apostles who are ministering. Um, yes, please like and share the video. We got Pastor Edward Hill, we love you, sir. God bless you, man of God down in Mississippi. Uh, we thank God for each of you and we love you all. Be blessed, continue to increase in the word of God and allow God to minister to the world around you through you. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Have a great night.